Manipul Lands by Charles Hoy Fort, Part 2, Chapter 15b. A stone fell, May 17, 1830, in the earthquake region around Comrie. It fell at Perth, 22 miles from Comrie. See Fletcher's List, page 100. Upon February 15, 1837, the black powder fell upon the Comrie region. Edinburgh New Philosophical Journal, Volume 31, page 293. October 12, 1839, a quake at Comrie. According to the Reverend M. Walker of Comrie, the sky, at the time, was peculiarly strange and alarming, and appeared as if hung with sackcloth. In Mallet's catalogue, report of the British Association, 1854, page 290, it is said that, throughout the month of October, shocks were felt at Comrie, sometimes slight and sometimes severe, like distant thunder or reports of artillery. The noise sometimes seemed to be high in the air, and was often heard without any sensible shock. Upon the 23rd of October, occurred the most violent quake in the whole series of phenomena at Comrie. See the Edinburgh New Philosophical Journal, Volume 32. All data in this publication were collected by David Milne. According to the Reverend M. Maxton of Fowlis Mance, ten miles from Comrie, rattling sounds were heard in the sky, preceding the shock that was felt. In Volume 33, page 373 of the journal, someone who lived seven miles from Comrie is quoted. In every case, I am inclined to say that the sound proceeded not from underground. The sound seemed high in the air. Someone who lived at Gowrie, 40 miles from Comrie, is quoted. The most general opinion seems to be that the noise accompanying the concussion proceeded from above. See volume 34, page 87. Another impression of explosion overhead and concussion underneath. The noises heard first seemed to be in the air, and the rumbling sound in the earth. Milne's own conclusion, it is plain that there are, connected with the earthquake shocks, sounds both in the earth and in the air, which are distinct and separate. If, upon the 23rd of October, 1839, there was a tremendous shock, not of subterranean origin, but from a great explosion in the sky of Comrie, and if this be accepted, there will be concussions somewhere else. The faults of dogmas will open, there will be seismic phenomena in science. I have a feeling of a conventional survey of this Scottish sky. Vista of the fair, blue, vacant expanse, our suspicions dog the impression with black alarms, but also do we project detonating stimulations into the fair and blue, but unoccupied and meaningless. One cannot pass this single occurrence by, considering it only in itself. It is one of the long series of quakes of the earth at Comrie and phenomena in the sky at Comrie. We have stronger evidence than the mere supposition of many persons in and near Comrie that, upon October 23, 1839, something had occurred in the sky, because sounds seemed to come from the sky. Milne says that clothes, bleaching on the grass, were entirely covered with black particles which presumably had fallen from the sky. The shocks were felt in November. In November, according to Milne, a powder-like suit fell from the sky upon Comrie and surrounding regions. In his report to the British Association, 1840, Milne, reviewing the phenomena from the year 1788, says, Occasionally there was a fall of fine, black powder, 